snap. And that was the sound of my Christmas spirit dying. How bad was the Broncos' loss on Christmas Eve? It was so bad, Bill Belichick was out there hugging his quarterback, Bailey Azapi, showing full-on human emotion. Belichick does not become human unless something horrible happens to his opponent. Two weeks ago, when Zappi beat the Steelers, Bill denied his hug. Yes, sir. Congrats. Beating Denver the way they did earned Zappi the hardest achievement in all sports, Bill's admiration. Welcome back to the new, 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 worst game ever. Uh, the game that ended my 2023 season, basically. All my Broncos had to do to keep their playoff hopes alive was beat a three-win Patriots team starting a backup quarterback on Christmas Eve with nothing to play for. Flashbacks, PTSD, no, 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 not again, not again, not again, not again. I was gifted a deja vu Christmas nightmare, and the Broncos squandered every single opportunity they had to win. They fought back in the fourth, all the lose in horrific life-questioning fashion. Bill Belichick is basically Mel Gibson in The Patriot. This is Bailey Zappi, and the Broncos ready to win the game, and this is Bill on the final drive. It's the new worst to the 19th power, and I have just officially reached the character title limit on YouTube, guys. I hope your stupid holiday was better than mine. Uh, if you want to support this channel, this stupid ass channel, you can buy my coffee over at benchwarmerbrew.com. We've got a lot of roasts. This is my favorite roast. It's a dark roast. It's the best roast, but go check out my coffee company. Or don't. Who gives a shit anymore, right? Who really gives a shit about my stupid ability to make money? Now, before I dive in, I have one serious football question. What is milk territory? And their playoff probability gets closer to coin flip territory, a loss closer to milk territory. Why are all these football commenters talking about milk? There's a dairy fail for the winning milk the cows. I've got nipples. Can you milk me, Greg? I would have liked to meet my parents on Christmas Eve, but I was live streaming this abomination of a game. Now, the real reason the Broncos lost was due to the opening series. Let's just put it there. Bailey Zappi gifted the Broncos points as he was immediately strip sacked. First play of the game, Denver recovers at the eight. This is the rust zone. You unlock this door with the pizza, pizza, pizza. This is where he's immaculate. It's Christmas Eve, the holiday honoring the night God impregnated Mary against her will with Jesus in the immaculate conception. The history books don't ask that question, do they? Did Mary give consent to God? Now that's the Red Rider BB gun perfectly wrapped under the tree, just like you asked for, Russell Wilson. And what does the Broncos offense do? They shoot their fucking eye out. They'll shoot your eye out, kid. But wait, wait, that wasn't an interception. Ball hit the ground. What does Sean Payton do? Oh yeah, screw the three points. We certainly won't need those later. Let's shoot our other fucking eye out. Javante Williams gets tackled by his own teammate here. Second week in a row, Quinn Miner stopped Denver from scoring at the goal line. Maybe he should also play on that defensive line. No points after that fumble. Fortunately, the Broncos defense was doing their part and Denver walked away with a rushing touchdown later in the first quarter, taking a 7-0 lead. But after that first quarter touchdown, after the Broncos didn't have insanely advantageous field position, this was the Broncos offense for two hours. Russell Wilson spinning in a an endless circle. He's the human embodiment of your 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 video buffering buffering. Now knowing how close this game was, knowing it was tied with less than two minutes to go, I have to circle back to the officials robbing the Broncos of a victory. Just like the Commanders game with the no call in the end zone on Cortland Sutton, the Zebras are responsible for two Broncos losses this year. I'm gonna pin two on them. And while many of you may be celebrating the fact that you won't have to watch the Rust Zone in prime time for the playoffs, I can't ignore the very poignant fact that this was indeed a fuck the refs 
type of game. You know, this is not the conduct of a gentleman. No shit, you red coat bastard. The only uniform I hate more than your red coat is the black and white stripes of the zebra. In a game of fumbles, twas decided by a fumble. Javante Williams, who, get this, was in the process of losing yards, executing the bane of my football existence, the swing pass. Fumbles the ball here. Fortunately, the Broncos recover. Great job by Ben Powers to fall on the ball here. Clearly, he has the ball. He's touched down, right? Not if you're that GD refs. They award the ball to the Patriots. For the 10th fucking time this season, I got to hear Gene Steratore telling me how the refs on the ground made a mistake. It did feel to me that the player, the 74 from Denver, has that football right there and he's touched down by contact. Now Denver would have been in second and long there with a good chance to kick a field goal had that been ruled correctly. Instead, nothing. Denver does hit halftime up seven to three. Uh, I wanna call the third quarter of this game the third quarter from hell, but I'm actually getting quite cozy existing in football hell. What place is worse than hell? An airplane sitting on the tarmac in Phoenix in the summer that will never get cleared for takeoff. The Patriots scored 23rd quarter points. The Broncos accumulated negative seven yards of offense in the third. Demario Douglas became the most unguardable receiver in the NFL. Zeke Elliott, Zeke Elliott hurtled his way into the end zone. Overweight Zeke hurtling in mile high. Uh, the air is thin, but it ain't that thin here. And somewhere, Bill Belichick was screaming about a bad spot on his hot mic. He didn't get us hot. I do have to give the Broncos credit. They are the best team in the NFL at losing yards on screen passes. I'll take that as a compliment. It's not. It is not. It's foreshadowing. Again, Russ has the pocket awareness of zero, takes a, a terrible sack on third and 13 on the two yard line, which sets up a short punt. Great field position and the Patriots Throw a touchdown to Micah Gusecki. Zeke Elliott and Mike Gusecki have combined for five touchdowns this season, two of which came against the Broncos. And then we were treated to the double muff. Yeah, Marvin Mims muffs the kickoff, recovers, tries to make up for his mistake and makes another mistake. It may be true in mathematics, but in football, Marvin, two negatives don't make a positive. A great peanut punch here by Marty Maypu in New England goes from trailing by four points to leading by 17 in less than a full quarter. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe Russ shot out both of his eyes and his eardrums from that Red Rider BB gun joke from earlier. Because a man who has played quarterback for 12 years just has the pocket presence of Helen Keller. 10 of Russ's passes in this game behind the line of scrimmage. Russ completed four passes over 10 yards, just four. 18 of his passes were thrown at five yards or less. This is the part of the show where I should be excited though. I should be excited about the two fourth quarter touchdown drives. Russ and the offense executed to perfection against a very good Patriots defense. Marvin Mims atoned for his fumble. And Crow, my new favorite tight end scored. And they get the two point conversion twice. They score 16 points on, on two drives. Jerry Judy, Brandon Johnson, and Javante Williams all out there making plays. They finally stepped up in place of Cortland Sutton who had exited with the concussion. But you know why I'm not excited? Uh, these two touchdowns only multiplied my pain. I was fine living with the dull headache that was this game. I accepted that as soon as Cortland Sutton exited, we were going to have no magic because he is the magic. He is the MVP of the Broncos offense. But Russell Wilson took me into the rust zone. He pulled me in. He gave me some Tylenol and my headache went away. Uh, but you see, it was not Tylenol that Russ gave me. It was Tylenol dipped in salmonella poisoning. And I spent the rest of the game evacuating both ends of my orifices with ass piss and Christmas ham. This is uh, the Denver Broncos experience in 2023 in a nutshell. Russell Wilson, who is arguably the best thrower of the football the Broncos have had since John Elway. Yes, Russ has a better arm than Peyton did here in Denver, is insanely talented. Talented enough to lead two touchdown drives in the fourth quarter, but a drive later when all Denver needs is a first down, just 10 yards. 
Russ is incapable of doing that. Either Sean Payton doesn't trust him or he doesn't trust himself because 40 fucking swing passes every game ain't doing it. Remember the screen pass? <laughs> that lost yards earlier that led to Patriots points? Uh, Sean Payton was like, yeah, let's run that shit again. They lose more yards. Next play, where does Russ go? Right back to the running back, which everyone knows. That's where he's going. Patriots bat the ball down. Can't win games if 90% of your passing targets are to the running back. If you want to talk about the difference between being good and great at the quarterback position in the NFL, that is the drive that defines it. Denver had three timeouts, basically just needed two first downs to win this game. It's not the two touchdown drives to dig you out of the deficit you help create. It's the simple drive, the must convert drive, where getting into field goal range wins you the game. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, pre-2023, all win this game because of that drive. And after the Broncos tied up the game, Bill Belichick did the most Belichickian thing ever. He ran the ball twice, playing for overtime. Just don't make a mistake and his team has a chance. And then he watched as Sean Payton called his timeouts to play for one more possession. All part of Mel Gibson's evil plan as Bill lulled the Broncos defense to sleep and then on third down struck with this deep ball to beat Denver's best corner Pat Sertan where the coverage was actually very tight. Just a great play by New England. And then the Patriots kicker, uh, their kicker Nick Fo- no, eh, ah. I'm afraid I, uh, I don't know your name. Chad Ryland! Do, do forgive me, Chad, Chad Ryland, who missed a key field goal, an extra point earlier in this game. High snap. Blasted the game winner right down the gooch. Okay, so the game started with Sean Payton messing up, not taking points after the Patriots fumbled in the goal to go situation, and then ended with Sean Payton getting out coached by the master, who we all thought was on his New England football deathbed. No. He came back just to get us. This is Patriots fans watching Bill Belichick, though, destroy their draft position right before he pieces the hell out. If Bill is done in New England, I respect the hell out of that. And no, the Patriots are not going to get the next CJ Stroud. He's not going to fall to them. They will get the QB equivalent of... That's right. If you thought my suffering was over after this game ended, wrong! Freaking wrong! Because then on Christmas, I watched as Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs let the Raiders beat them at home with Aiden O'Connell not completing a single pass after the first quarter. Which means Denver would be a game behind Kansas City with the very real chance to win the damn division. And now our chances of just getting into the playoffs are next to nothing. And that really is the worst game of 2023. Thanks for watching my misery. Please subscribe here on YouTube. It doesn't make me less miserable, but it helps knowing we're all doing it together. Winners and losers will be up later tonight.